Welcome to Soul Meds One. The meditation today is about faith. And if you remember, if we have faith as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. But how many mountains have you moved lately? The thought for today, faith is easy when we feel secure. In a fast-changing environment, it becomes more difficult to feel secure. Jesus knows distractions will come. But he is immovable and secure. For the scripture today, we want to read from Psalm 37, verses 1 to 24. You can read from any version you prefer. I will read from the New International Reader's Version. Don't be upset because of sinful people. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong. Like grass, they soon dry up. Like green plants, they will soon die. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live in the land and enjoy its food. Delight, find your delight in the Lord. Then he will give you everything your heart really wants. Commit your life to the Lord. And here is what he will do if you trust in him. He will make the reward for your godly life shine like the dawn. He will make the proof of your honest life shine like the sun at noon. Be still and wait patiently for the Lord to act. Don't be upset when other people succeed. Don't be upset when they carry out their evil plans. Turn away from anger and don't give it to rest. Don't be upset, because that only leads to evil. Sinful people will be destroyed. But those who put their hope in the Lord will receive the land. In a little while, there won't be any more sinners. Even if you look for them, you won't be able to find them. But those who are free of pride will be given the land. They will enjoy peace and success. Sinful people make plans to harm those who do what is right. They grind their teeth at them, but the Lord laughs at those who do evil. He knows the day is coming when he will judge them. Sinners pull out their swords. They bend their bows. They want to kill poor and needy people. They plan to murder those who lead honest lives but they will be killed by their own swords. Their own bows will be broken. Those who do what is right may have very little, but it's better than the wealth of many sinners. The power of those who are evil will be broken, but the Lord takes good care of those who do what is right. Those who are without blame spend their days in the Lord's care. What he has given them will last forever. When trouble comes to them, they will have what they need. When there is little food in the land, they will still have plenty. But sinful people will die. The Lord's enemies may be like flowers in the field. But they will be swallowed up. They will disappear like smoke. Sinful people borrow and don't pay back. But those who are godly give freely to others. The Lord will give the land to those he blesses, but he will destroy those he curses. The Lord makes secure the footsteps of the person who delights in him. Even if that person trips, he won't fall. The Lord's hand takes good care of him. David was called of God to be king. And we already know that he didn't become king overnight. Rather, it was a struggle. The problem was King Saul didn't want to quit. King Saul was also called of God to be king. But then he failed and was replaced by David. It seemed the people who loved God were doing better 
than those who didn't. But it didn't see it as a problem. The longer the problem lasted, the angrier Saul became and David became more patient. Psalm 37 is all about how we should live to change our culture, which is the focus of all the meditations in this book. Not found here, but throughout Scripture. Theology needs to be the same throughout the whole of Scripture because God never changes. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the same God, the same promises, the same fulfillment, the same front to back in the Bible. The first is to stay focused on God's plan, not ours. This does not mean we need to be poor and say we enjoy it when we do not. It's never fun to be poor. It's never fun to worry about where your next meal comes from to feed your family. It does not mean when others have success we should stuff our jealousy. We all have a little bit of that in our life. That is both not real of godly and we should be careful. Meaning we should not follow others because they are successful. In Korea, many people follow success. One person is success, you have ten of the same in the next month. We need to work with God's plan and remain focused on the fact that God is in control at all times. And that's pretty difficult because we really want to do our own thing. Often, we do not see the future because they are too short-sighted. There are many references to looking at our plan today, day by day, and we let God look down the road. In verse 3 and following, we find key words. The first is a series of three ideas. Have faith, rest in the land, seek righteousness. These need to be done together. What good is having faith if you can't rest? What good is having rest if you don't seek righteousness because it will come back to bite you? Most of us have some faith. As long as we can see our security, we have faith. If I know I'm going to get paid, then I have faith in doing the job. It's when we find others doing better and our world becoming shaky that we find faith hard. The second, rest in the land. A little bit harder. Imagine the Israelites surrounded by nations wanting to destroy them. That wouldn't be very secure in my eyes. It was hard to rest. You never knew which nation was going to attack. Imagine David having King Saul trying to find and kill him every night. Again, the rest was hard. To have rest means we need to rid our minds and bodies of stress. We get rid of stress through faith and trust, both focused on God. We stay focused, actively pursuing righteousness. The next principle is to delight in the Lord. There is a promise in this one. The promise is God will give you the desires of your heart. What a promise to carry this year. Or every day. Imagine how he will fulfill our desires if we focus on the goodness of God. If we focus on the goodness of God, our desires will change. And then we become lined up with God. We need to serve others so we can praise God and give praise to God. Our desires will change from getting praise from men to praise from God, which is better. Because men will change their praise in a heartbeat, but God will never do that. Finally, we hope for the future others do not have. Many people have hope, but few are secure in their hope. 
That is why we focus on ourselves. We are not secure in how big God is. The psalmist says in verse 17, The Lord is the support of the good. The days of the upright are numbered by the Lord, and their heritage will be forever. The Lord is on our side. He is our protector, like he was for David. He is our hope, because he has called us, and he is the guarantor of our hope of eternal life. To live our lives so culture changes, we need to stay focused on God's plan, not ours. We need to seek his praise, not ours. We delight in the Lord and his ability to keep his promises. The peace. A question before we go to the reflection. What takes our focus away from God? A big question. And that's the first reflection question. What takes our focus away from God? There's so many distractions today. We could make a big list. Secondly, how would changing focus increase or decrease my faith? How can we increase our faith if we are not focused on Jesus Christ? We put our faith in physical things. Things that can change and get lower value. Why not focus on Jesus Christ to increase our faith? Last, how would a pursuit of righteousness affect my community? Pursuit of righteousness Kind of a difficult way to determine change, but if I pursue righteousness, truth, wisdom, so many things, if I, that's my pursuit, and that's an acting word, that's a, it's a high action word, pursuit. Lots of energy there. How would it affect my community? <coughs> For the prayer, Lord, Turn my small faith into community-changing power. Take my stress and insecurity so I am not distracted. In Jesus' name.